a mysterious world, a somewhat unknown lifestyle, creatures that no longer exist, people who lived hundreds of years, supposed giants who walked the earth and a time that arouses the curiosity of many people. Of course, we are talking about the pre-flood era. The Bible records the period before the flood in the first chapters of the book of Genesis. According to the biblical text, in the pre-flood era, human civilization achieved great achievements, but it also perpetuated a culture of sin. But what were people's lives like at that time? What did they do? What happened in the world before the great flood? That's exactly what we'll talk about from now on in this video. Obviously, the first family before the flood was Adam's family. After being expelled from the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve settled down and had sons and daughters. As we know, the first son of the first couple was Cain. But Cain was also the world's first murderer. Before the flood, he cowardly killed Abel, his own brother. After his terrible sin, Cain received a mark from God and built a city in the land of Nod. Cain named this city after his first son, Enoch, and this city, before the flood, is the first city mentioned in the Bible in Genesis, chapter 4. Contrary to what extra-biblical theories claim, the scripture clearly explains that man was created by God as a rational and morally capable being. This means that, although man experiences a type of intellectual evolution as he acquires knowledge and develops new technologies, biblically there was no evolutionary process as a species as defended by some scientific theories. This becomes very clear when we look at the biblical accounts of the period before the flood. As was said, Cain, the first human being to be born on earth, was developed enough to build a city, and his descendants, in turn, were responsible for great inventions. For example, with Jabal, Jubal, and Tubalcaim, society before the flood learned to live in tents, raise herds of cattle, develop the arts using musical instruments and forge tools through working with copper and iron. Then, in Noah's time, the Bible shows how man already had the capacity and resources necessary to build a large ark, according to divine instructions. So, although the Bible does not provide many details about what this period was like, it is clear that in the pre-flood world there was strong technological and cultural development. A very frequent question about the pre-flood period concerns the duration of this period, that is, how long did the pre-flood world last? The truth is that the Bible does not explain how long this period lasted, but many scholars believe that the time between creation and the flood may have been much longer than the rest of biblical history. Many attempts were made to date this period, but all without success. In fact, the only record that provides any chronological data about this period is that present in the genealogical list of Genesis, chapter 5. However, it is unlikely to be able to establish exact dates from this record, simply because that is not its purpose. Biblical genealogies are more interested in establishing lineages than in defining chronological data. In fact, some of these genealogical lists may be representative and not exhaustive. In other words, there may be intentional gaps in these lists to prioritize individuals who had some relevance in biblical history. In these representative lists, when it is said that one individual fathered the other, this means that the first individual is the ancestor of the second, and not necessarily its father. This occurs in other biblical genealogies, and many scholars believe that it is not completely impossible that this occurred in the pre-flood genealogical list of Genesis 5. But from this list, at least scholars can see that the great development experienced by the man before the flood probably had to do with people's longevity. At that time, there was only one language, and God allowed men to live hundreds of years. This certainly played a fundamental role in the technological growth of that period, and also in the transmission of information. Yes, there are other interpretations regarding the longevity of people who lived before the flood, but the most traditional and widely accepted interpretation by Christian scholars is the one that makes a natural reading of the biblical text, which records that those people actually lived hundreds of years. But if there is something that marked the period before the flood, it was certainly sin. The Bible says that the sinful lifestyle adopted by Cain quickly spread throughout the pre-flood world. For example, 
Lamech, a descendant of Cain, was the first to adopt polygamy in the biblical pages, in addition to being a double murderer who took pride in his cruelty, as we read in Genesis, chapter 4, between verses 18 and 24. And Cain himself, after killing Abel, not only did not repent, but also thought that the divine punishment on him was unfair. In Genesis, chapter 6, the Bible even says that in the period before the flood, the sons of God mixed with the daughters of men. It is true that some interpreters argue that this meant a mixture between spiritual beings and humans, in other words, supposedly fallen angels had relations with women on earth. But most scholars agree that the interpretation that best suits the biblical text is the one that says that this mixture was, in fact, human degeneration promoted by the relationship between pious people and impious people. So impiety quickly prevailed and characterized that entire civilization. This means that, at that time, the pious lineage of Seth was the branch of humanity that preserved the knowledge of God. But over time, this lineage mixed with the ungodly lineage of Cain, and spiritual depravity reached an intolerable limit. But in the period before the flood, there were also people who were truly committed to the Lord. Abel, for example, was the first martyr and continued to be remembered as an example of faith until New Testament times. Enoch was another who had such a close relationship with God that he ended up being translated so as not to see death. Finally, it was during that period that Noah was also born, grew up, and developed as a man. But the Bible records that in the final years of the pre-flood period, Noah was an exception, a person who continued to fear the Lord. The biblical text says that Noah's family was the only one to be spared when God's patience found the situation of widespread depravity in that civilization intolerable. And so the period came to an end with the outpouring of God's wrath and the destruction of the earth. The situation was so complicated, evil was at such a high level, that the biblical writer records divine discontent with humanity through the figure of repentance, saying that God had regretted having created man. In the New Testament, the Apostle Peter describes the end of history before the flood as follows, by which things the world then perished, being covered with the waters of the flood. But everything that happened at that time serves as a warning to us. This is because the Lord Jesus Christ himself said that in the last days of the present era, the pre-flood lifestyle will be repeated. Each person will live according to their own will, according to their own desires, feasting, celebrating, interacting. But everyone will be too busy for God's call to repentance. So, just as happened with the generation before the flood, people will only come to their senses when God's judgment is poured out, with no opportunity for anyone to go back. In fact, Jesus illustrated this moment, saying that just as in the pre-flood world the wicked were taken by the waters of the flood, in the final days, unrepentant men will also be taken from this world by God's judgment.